What's up dudes, HW here. Today I wanna to talk about Tone Matched IR. Some people say they can make your Helix sound like any amp in the world. Other people say 3.5 cabs are all you need, blah, 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 uh, it's all scam, marketing high, blah, 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 blah. I, whatever, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Why don't I let you be the judge? And I know you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. HW, you, but you sell Tone Matched IRs. You, 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 you've been making Tone Matched, Tone Junkie makes lots of Tone Matched IRs for the Helix. You're bias. Your mother's bias, okay? Listen, here's nine clips, okay? <laughs> nine clips from the 65 collection. This is just nine sounds, all right? Same guitar, right out of the box. All that's changing is the IR. I'm not changing anything else. There's no big EQ changes. We're using just the deluxe models, the N and the V models that are in there. And you can hear what the tone matched IRs do and what they don't do. Check it out. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of differences in those sounds. Obviously, they're all clean fenders. They're all American fenders. One's not super gained up and one's super clean, but there's a lot of differences. You can hear major differences in the low end, in the presence, really high end, you hear that. The, the differences are from normal or vibrato channel. Now, in the Helix, we get that. We do get that from different models. We have a normal and a vibrato model, but one thing we don't have on any of the Fender models is a bright switch. And that's on so many of the Fenders, right? Um, we don't have a bright switch that really gives you that bright, brilliant, uh, present sound, right? And you hear that changing in these, in these different clips here. You can go back and listen. You can hear how much darker some are. You're also hearing differences in speaker size. You know, there's 12 inch speakers in here. There's, there's actually, I think three different types of 12 inch speakers that you just heard. There's a 15 inch speaker. There are 10 inch speakers. There are, I think there's two different types of 10 inch speakers. And even just with 10 inch speakers and 12 inch, there's open back cabs here. There's closed back cabs here. And you might think at first glance, okay, well, who cares? It's just a speaker with the mics on it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you firsthand from owning a lot of cabs and putting mics on them. The, the closed back sound is largely the, the the pressure differential that makes it difficult for that speaker to move because it doesn't have all the air in the world to displace. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Tone match IRs get you this approximation. That's that's the word I would use for it. It's an approximation. Does the vibroverb now break up exactly like a vibroverb? No, probably not. It's got the deluxe model, but does it sound more mid-rangey? Does the deluxe sound more punchy? Does the super or the concert have this extra high-end brightness and this very tight, much tighter bass than the looser basses and some of the other amps because they have a 10 inch speaker? They do. And that's what makes tone matching in this process such a great way to create. Does the Helix have everything you need? Yeah, of course. But I'm a tone junkie, bro. This, is, this, this isn't about what I need, right? I need one guitar and a modeler, right? I need, I need one guitar and an HX stop. This is about everything I want, right? 
this is about everything I want. I want to be able to play this amp because it's a little more like Stevie and it inspires me in this way. And I want to be able to throw an overdrive in front of this because the overdrive mixed with the EQ does something else. And that brings me to the next little group of sound clips. So check these out. Now I took a bunch of those same sounds. Some of them are different sounds, but they're all from the 65 collection. They're all uh, Fender amps tone matched. And now we just turned on a tube screamer. Same reverb, same delay, same overdrive settings and bada bing, bada boom, you can hear how adding the same exact thing on top of these, it should make it sound more the same. But you can really appreciate some of the differences in the EQs and how a mid-range overdrive, like a Tube Screamer, mixes with those different EQs. <laughs> So when I play those, I get the sensation that I'm playing the real amps. And what I mean by that is, listening to those clips and knowing those amps because I own them, the Deluxe sounds punchy. It has that more mid-range focus. Immediately, the Vibrolux to me, you can go back and listen, the Vibrolux ha is the most snappy. I don't know if it's the one I have, if it's the particular speakers or what. It's the most snappy and high-endy. It's got 10-inch speakers in there, but it's different than my Super or the Concert, which has extra high-end. It has that 10-inch tighter lows, but it's not quite as snappy. Maybe it's moving more air, it's four speakers, I don't know. You hear the Bandmaster there. That cabinet that I own that's paired with the Bandmaster is a warm cabinet. It's a, I don't know if it's those speakers inside. I don't know if it's the closed back, smaller nature. It's it's there, whereas the bigger cabinet you heard on the basement really has the idea that it lets it breathe, that has a feel that it gets to breathe. Maybe there's more air. So like I talked about earlier, that pressure that is in a closed back cab, and there is a lot of pressure, it, the pressure differential is higher, much higher in a closed back cab compared to an open back cab, which definitely affects the performance of the speaker and the sound it throws out right in the front. Okay, but anyway, uh, how do you simulate that? you know, um, in an open or closed back or in a modeler or, you know, to put it up, th that gets into the minutia that may not even be worth giving the user options for. And I, I get that. You want to have a really easy to use AI, uh, a UI. And so you might take out all these little things, right? Um, y y you go more Apple than Android, if that makes sense. You know, you, you want the user to have an easy time getting around rather than have access to every single parameter. That's what I like about tone matched IRs. You get to mix all of these parameters, things that in the analog world change the sound of signal chains. And no matter how small or big, maybe it's that the mic I used is worn in, meaning the ribbon is stretched out because I've been slapping it with tons and tons of decibel and sound pressure, tons, tons of sound pressure, and it's loosening a little bit and it's losing some high end. And maybe that means a particularly bright amp results in a little bit of roll off that I like. That, that's not unheard of to do on recording. Famously, Hendrix preferred 50-foot cables because he would dime his marshals. They would be absolutely super bright. He would throw it on the bridge of his Strat, super bright. And when he plugged in the 50-foot cable, it rolled off high end. He, he was using the wrong thing for the job, but it made the thing right. It was a small little detail. Now, if you plug in a 50-foot cable, will you get Hendrix's, Hendrix's sound? No, 
oh, absolutely not. It's the smallest little minutia, but you add all those things together. And that is what I love about Tomeshed IRs. You get these very complicated EQ curves, and that's all we're really talking about here is EQ curves. We're getting these extremely complicated different EQ curves that I couldn't possibly dial in with EQs. And I've got tons of videos on Helix EQs, right? Go back and look. I've got tons of videos on modeler EQs, on Kemper EQs. Just EQ in general is something guitar players should really know how to use and understand. And when you are able to look at how one amp's signal looks compared to another, you can see the differences that you're hearing. And that's what's really fascinating. In the IRs themselves, I can see the differences that you hear. And so for me, it's a wonderful way to create. I think that is how I view it. You know, are you getting a 65 Bandmaster in the Helix? No. That amp may do things. It may break up. Are you going to, like, I'll give you the example. When you turn up the gain on a Bandmaster or a Bassman, most of those components are the same, except I mean, it's the same, but a lot of those components are shared, except the big one is the output transformer. The basement is kind of the rock and fender amp because it has that much larger output transformer used on the bass amps, in that case, the bass amp, but also used on the higher wattage fenders. Whereas the Bandmaster, when it breaks up, that, that smaller output transformer gives it a more raspy, kind of a smaller choked tone. That is the sound of a Bandmaster overdriven. And that is why basements are so loved for their like almost Marshall-esque quality, you know? It's the evolution of that tweed basement put in a blackface form, but it still gives you that most rockin' thing. If you turn up the model in the Helix, are you gonna get that? Are you gonna get those two differences? No, you'll get an approximation of the EQ differences set on the amps, right? Given the, the, the test signals. But that's what they are, approximations. So at clean, at slightly overdriven, I think they're gonna be very accurate. You know, you throw, um, and that's how I package mine, right? There's an option. Uh, to raise the drive or lower the drive, but then on other than that, it's mostly pedals because that's how you run a Fender in real life, right? You don't run back to your amp and turn it up and turn it down and that, that sort of thing. But to me, tone matching is a wonderful approximation because what are we after? A lot of times we're after analog stuff. We want the sound of that amp from 64. We want Stevie's Vibroverb. We want you know, Jimmy's Super Amplifier 100 JGM 45 turn into a stereo 100 watt amp or a dual output 100 watt amp. Like that one. That's what that is. That's a JTM 45 100. It's a, it's, they just call them Super Amplifier 100s, but they're all JTMs. Anyway, um, you, you you want that. You want Mayer's Dumble. You want... Ma you, those are the sounds we're after. Maybe you want John Prashanti's Basement. It's... We're going after stuff that really exists. And so to me... It's very logical to use stuff that really exists as references because I am much more at home with an amp and microphones trying to get a sound I want and then maybe later adjusting that sound with an EQ than I am starting from just like a, like a I don't know, like a, like a just like here's, here's a stock thing change it into what you want. I'm like, I don't really know what I want. I don't know. I don't have a reference. But if you tell me, what does that sound like? Just just me personally, because I, I'm such a tone junkie and I own so many amps and I've played so many amps and I'm just obsessed with amps. I know that like, oh, that Tone King Imperial, it I love it because it sounds like a deluxe, but it's got a little extra presence almost like a chimey presence. That's what makes the Tone King Imperial such an incredible amp. That it's got the character, largely the character of something I love. 80% deluxe, 20% more like chime, presenty, beautiful glassy bell thing on top. Deluxe doesn't do that exactly. Anyways, our Tone Match IR scams, I don't know. You be the judge. I have an HW.